And welcome back to the Off the Clock Show. You are joined once again with your host, Sean Gervais from the Orbis X CRM, as well as Marty, Mr. Marshall Hill from the Pints of Polishing Podcast, as well as Hypercare Car Clean Products, and the ultimate spot if you want to become a distributor. Sometimes you got to sell some shit. <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> like, if you've just been laying in bed at night, just going, I want to like, distribute. I got to distribute. Got to distribute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, but I, I think it's a real thing. A lot of people sit at night and they think about, you know, things like, that they could do. Yeah. It's like, did I make ends meet today? Did I make enough? Do I, am I doing what I want to do? And what else do I do? And that's where, uh, you know, there's always more, there's always more. And, uh, it, you know, it, sometimes it's more in terms of finances. Sometimes it's more just in terms of wanting to do some other shit. Like this morning I woke up, wanted to do some more shit. And I thought about what I could do and I like helping people. So I wrote a little mini book, which I will be releasing with this podcast. You'll see the link at the bottom and uh, you'll be able to download that book for free because yeah. Sean's all about tips and freebies. <laughs> so, but you, you yeah. probably at some point laid in bed thinking of things to do, right? Oh, I know I have oh, like, absolutely. I mean, yeah. most people that generally get somewhere 20 years later mm -hmm. have spent a lot of times. Just oh, I wonder thinking. if, hmm, yep. I wonder. Oh, so sure 100%. enough. All right. Definitely. If you're the guy that's been laying in bed, yeah, yeah. hyper clean distribution, then that's you're a lot you like me do. and Sean, let's chat. All right. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause I, I think it's a fun exercise. Everybody should do, to be honest, is just take a pause and, and lay there. And uh, you know, so the other day my daughter was outside, we just got new grass put in by where our pool is. Cause they ripped up the yard and everything and fresh grass kid sees it. What's the first thing they want to do? She went, threw a little towel on it, and she just laid there. She was just laying there. And I saw her from the kitchen window, and she's just laying there, legs crossed, and she's just looking up at the sky. And I thought to myself, I was like, when's the last time I just stared at the clouds? So I ran outside, and I said, mind if I join you? She said, come on. She said, look at that cloud. It looks like a dog. I was like, oh, okay. So I'm looking. I'm like, yeah, I can kind of see it. I didn't see it. But anyways, um, so, but I'm looking at the clouds, and I was just watching them move. And I, I saw the movement. and I was like, geez, man, literally the whole world is just passing you by without you even realizing it, you know? Anyway, without getting too philosophical and too deep, I was sitting there and I was just thinking. I got to know. I mean, did you, you gotta... really just lie to your daughter? So when she listens to this later in life, she's going to be like, my dad lied to me. Uh... She, she watches this. all. She actually subscribed. So she watches this all the time. She's going to hear it. Hey, sorry, Mari. But uh, yeah, I did not see the dog. But uh, that's funny. <laughs> out here giving tips and breaking hearts but uh so <laughs> so i did see other you know objects and stuff we were looking at and you know she was like oh that looks like this and i you know i i pretty much saw it so i thought i saw it probably didn't see it but uh sorry mari <laughs> round two but uh but yeah no it's yeah so I, I was laying there watching it and watching the clouds go and all these ideas started just rambling through my brain i'm sure it happens with you all the time every entrepreneur it's just, it's something we can't really turn off. You just start thinking of things. And sometimes it's things in my current businesses that I'm thinking of how to improve or things I want to do or goals or whatever. Sometimes it's random shit. You know, it's like, geez, imagine if they had, uh, you know, I don't know, some random thing that did this or just inventions, like ideas. I think about stuff a lot. But noise is a big problem usually. And not necessarily noise like drums or something like that, but noise sometimes just you know, day-to-day -day tasks or things, even if you're in your office, you look over and you see like, oh, geez, my, the printer and the ink's getting low. I got to remember to order ink. You know, you're, you're always thinking of those kind of things. So to tune out, uh, that's the important part, you know? So it's a, uh, yeah. I was invigorated though. Stop Didn't and smell the flowers, huh? Yeah, exactly. You know, all that. I don't think a lot of people do that. I think a lot of people want to and wish they had the time. And I think that as entrepreneurs, we kind of do it without even knowing we're doing it. There's always those moments, you know, you drift off, you're in traffic or you're in a line or whatever. That's where our minds go, you know, and sometimes it's <clears> in bed, you know. I yeah. kind of always thought I didn't want to smell the flowers anymore because it, I'd always smell them. I'd be like, oh, like, yeah. oh, <laughs> like an allergy. It's like, so yeah, I, I don't ever really stop and smell the flowers, huh? Yeah, I, no? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not the flowers, but <laughs> but maybe. Well, you know the smell I do love. What's Absolute that? best like nature smell for me. Yeah. Fresh cut grass oh, out no on shit. a baseball field. Damn, that's hugely specific too. Okay. Damn. There's just that springtime. It's just you're back out on the diamond. 
you just smell fresh cut. It's a very specific smell for those of you that play baseball, you know it. And it's, yeah, that'll be with you forever. I wonder if that's also coupled with the visual of knowing that like the game's about to start, like that's where the magic's going to happen. You know, yeah, like if you maybe. couldn't see maybe that smell, you know, having gone through that experience, you'd probably recognize the smell and that would trigger something. But, you know, I think it's the whole package. I think it's the mm -hmm. visual. Yeah. yeah. I think my favorite smell. What would that be? Huh. Your flowers. You already said. Question. It would probably be, yeah, flowers, 100%. Because here's the thing. My really? wife has an, no joke. My wife has an impeccable garden. But actually, I can tell you specifically what one of my favorite smells is. There's two. One, rose water. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I could do without smelling an actual rose, but rose water for some reason. But I used to use that on my face in the morning. Now I've switched and they have this orange water that I buy. And it's like, uh, I don't know, they infuse it with orange peels or if it's just a whole orange, I have no idea. But I put that on my face in the morning. Oh, man, I don't know, something about it. I walk out like I, I've never been like a an aftershave or that kind of like, I don't like the musky kind of something with the orange. Considering you have a beard, it's probably hard to put on aftershave. Huh? Uh, true. Well, you know, these parts. <laughs> But my barber, because he'll when I when He's I a little up, sponge, he'll put it, yeah, yeah, a little, yeah, just you know, <laughs> yeah. See, that's that's what I need to do. keep it clean. I ceramic coat this part here, but then, <laughs> yeah, man, it's like me and doing my hair, I don't really have to worry about it, yeah. See, exactly, you know, you're taken care of, yeah. That's, don't really I got the same hairstyle every day, you're, you're kind of blessed in that aspect, I, I tell you, because this it just grows like weeds, man. It's uh, no, you oh, never tell a bald man a you're bald blessed man. to not have hair, no. <laughs> just no, tell man. people it's a choice tell people it's a choice i choose that no. <laughs> yeah see i do like my dad my dad's bald and he tells people he's not bald his head is solar powered that's what he tells mm. see there you go see <laughs> okay fine not blessed sure but uh i don't know let's just say having hair that grows too frequently can be a pain in the ass occasionally <laughs> he's like i'm gonna drive up to canada and strangle you but uh <laughs> <laughs> so aside from that don't want to have any beef because i've seen enough beef on the internet lately oh yeah lots <laughs> yeah, of fun beef in groups huh oh jesus yeah it's uh it's wild it's it's funny i i think it's one of the reasons why i started my own group separate because i could have just done the support like i was doing through email and all this stuff but i realized i wanted to communicate with groups but i wanted to have a group that wasn't filled with all the bullshit and the negativity and so starting a separate group and then pulling people in that were like-minded and good people made a, made a lot of sense. And well, I, I think, you know, I think they've done good. You've done good with that group. It really mm. is just focused Thank about you. Orbis yeah. X. Like, I think it's interesting how many people are like, Hey, what about this, Sean? And it's like, it's oh, like yeah. every day there's like popcorn <laughs> of ideas, right? Like, Oh yeah. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Popcorn <laughs> that roadmap. Of ideas. I know. And then, uh, and then I made the mistake of, was it yesterday? Or, yeah, I think it was yesterday. I posted um, sort of the top 10 things that I'm working on right at this very second. And then right now there's 109 items on the roadmap every day, two or three get added. And every day I finish two or three as well. So it kind of balances out. My goal is to chip away at it faster than they get added. So Holy it balances shit. out. You don't yeah. hear it never goes down. Huh? It never goes down. It just to always yeah. stays at all. There's some creative motherfuckers in the group, man. They're like, just when you think you're like, there's nothing else to possibly add. These guys, they pull the rabbit out the hat and they're like, how about this? And I'm like, well, shit, never thought of that exactly that way. All right. And then some things are easy. You know, like one guy posted this morning at like 9 a.m., had it finished by 9 30. Boom. Some things are easy. Other things, someone will, hey, these are the ones that get me. How hard would it be? Dot dot dot. Would it be possible? Dot dot dot. Those ones, when it starts like that, I know it's like buckle up, Sean. This is about to be. And and like sometimes I think people don't realize like the ask is like rephrase it a different way. If you're like, how hard would it be to give up three months of your life you know, to do this? And it's like ah, but. They're great ideas, and that's why I love them. And that's why, as you see, I'm very responsive and receptive to them because, you know what? Honestly, it's not just me that's made this awesome platform, but the community as well. Community. Here we go. Community. And, uh, uh -huh. So, yeah, your community. The What's interesting, too, is, you know, you don't see people like somebody puts a post. You don't see a bunch of people like, 
because that's what happens in all these other groups is they oh, just yeah. it's like there's these guys that just love to put out negative feedback, right? Like yeah. it's always it doesn't matter what somebody might have said, car could look immaculate and they'll be like, mm, yeah, but did you uh you know did and they'll just make up something? Did you do that? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's like, dude, just tell them good job or something, right? Like exactly. the beef inside of comments is where it's I think it, it's gross, right? Like yeah, and it's do you ever wonder, right? Like What's the deal with this guy? You wonder, like, I know one Always. particular guy that I, I, because we're we're friends on Facebook, it shows up that he comments on all these people's stuff, uh, yeah, and yeah. and I've really wanted to unfriend the guy. <laughs> like, I'm like, <laughs> I, why the hell do you want to go into every single group and just lob your negative comments on everybody? Yeah. Like, that's why do you think that is? Like, why do you think? I think, right. I mean, the number one that I think most people are always going to say is there's something going on with that guy, right? Like there's some insecurity. There's something that he feels insecure about that he's going to get his, his joy in life, right? His, his cup's going to get a little fuller if he puts out, you know, his views and he lets everybody know how he feels, right? Like, and this is me. I think there is, I think there is a psychological, I mean, listen, Zuckerberg did a great job of finding, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> finding what makes people just spit out their yeah. their life. And it's like, dude, go, you don't need to be in every Facebook group. And especially at yeah. every hour of every day, just yapping your mouth. Kills me is like, how do they have so much time to do that? And then I start to realize I'm like, they're probably not very busy. Yeah. And- even in the off chance that maybe they are busy, you know, maybe their staff are doing it. It's like, why aren't you focused on opening another location or doing something or even just helping people? You know what I mean? Like if you're so great at it, good. So why don't you use some of that energy for good? But I just don't know where people find the time to put that kind of energy out there. Me, I try to avoid it at all costs. And there's comments all the time, like especially in the beginning before over sex was like proven. I'd post in groups and people would have all kinds of shit to say. Now, a lot of them have had to shut up because now they realize like how much it's helping people and how much it's grown. But in the beginning, whoo, man, I would post some stuff. Even I wasn't even posting Orbis X stuff in the beginning. I was just happy my shop was running. And there were some guys that were, you know, in groups saying like, oh, you know, I'm struggling to make this much per week or whatever. I would post stuff as inspiration for them. And I'd be like, here's a screenshot on my calendar. Just letting you know, these numbers are possible. Don't give up just something like that you know other people would start posting like oh you don't have to go and showboat you don't have to brag those aren't real numbers let's see your bank account all this shit i'm like holy fuck guys like are you serious like my goodness like i don't know why people feel the need to take things to such an extreme when i'm trying to just give someone a pat on the back and encouragement and all they want to do is just like pull you down and it's and you can definitely say that i i would 99% right are Mm. unsuccessful yeah yeah I mean they're just not achieving success because you just never find successful people yeah they don't go out of the way to do that kind of shit yeah the vice versa is you don't find the successful people doing stuff like this so this deems you as you're unsuccessful and that's why you know like exactly so that's (laughs) <laughs> that's the ironically funny part right like it's true yeah and then other times i think too uh some people are a little jaded because of past experiences like i've seen some posts where and it happened to me when i was posting free stuff in the beginning like when i wrote my first book and i was giving that away for free and then i've seen other people they post stuff like hey I, i've achieved some seo success for example i want to share with you guys like some stuff to work for me people are so jaded because they've been scammed by other companies or something like that or something they did Maybe they feel they were scammed and it just because it didn't get results within 30 days. They're like, oh, fuck, SEO doesn't work. And it's like, no, no, it's a process. It's, you know, they they instantly go on the attack because of that problem they went through. And and it really deters a lot of other people. Like there's there's some people I know they were trying to post some SEO advice and stuff like that. And they were, you know, hammered on. It was like, oh, this must be a scam or something. Nothing's free. And it's like, oh, no, like I know the guy. He's just he's trying to help people. You know, he's done well. He's trying to help give back and and that's what i think a lot of successful people do is those philanthropic things but then because other people have been screwed over or they don't believe it they they jump to that negative side of society i feel and 
So yeah, how do you sure. stay from, from not being in the negative part? Is there things that you do that yeah. uh, helps keep the negative out of you? Cause there's no way that <laughs> nobody that goes through business long-term, it's not like you can <laughs> yeah. ever just not have negative, like, right? Like turn on blinders and be like, everything's yeah, positive. I mean, <laughs> that never happens ever. Yeah, no, they, no, never. And a, a big thing is realizing that your emotions don't actually exist. Like we've talked about that before. The only two emotions you're born with, you know, like fear of heights. And then, uh, yeah, your only two fears, fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. That's it. Yeah. So fear of falling, fear of loud noises. That's all you're born with. Everything else is mm -hmm. like learned behavior. Yep. Right. And so, so if you learned it, you can unlearn it. Exactly. And that's where, I, you know, there's, there's times I've had to catch myself where there, there could be, you know, an argument going on and then, I could be even halfway through a comment and then I stop myself. Like, what am I doing? Scrap the whole comment. So I'm like, that's not who I am. I'm letting something else control my emotions right now. And so I do a few things. Uh, definitely. First, my morning routine is, and it's religious every morning. I start off with comedy. Uh, so I watch comedy in the morning for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I have some comedians I subscribe to. I just, I watch those that kicks my day off in the right direction. I feel it's been working where it's, it's kind of just, lighthearted it's a joke and and I, I tackle the world that way whereas i know some people the first thing they do is watch the news that's the last thing i would ever want to do in my life is watch the news and that includes because some people count their facebook feed as news and depending what you follow that's that's like the last place i would go because just takes one comment and your ship could be going this way and that's like a torpedo just shooting you that way and uh, so i i avoid those kind of sources in the morning, but I also do things to pump me up. Uh, so so it's, some days it requires, you know, like a 15 minute workout downstairs. Other times it requires, you know, listen to, you know, a song that just gets me amped up. But recently my daughter was talking to me and she was asking me some questions about Mike Tyson and daddy, how come you don't box anymore? And I said, well, I stopped when I had kids and this and that. Um, so I said, let me show you some of Tyson's fights though. And I'm not going to show you highlight reels. Let me show you actually going to watch some of his fights and so I, I went showed her some of his fights throughout his career and she was the one that actually pointed it out but she said his eyes you can just see he wants it you know that hunger and anyway I so I was watching his fights and stuff and then I said you know for the next couple of days I'm gonna start my morning and I'm gonna just watch some highlight reels of stuff and I tell you man like seeing seeing I love boxing because it's just that person and their trainer against someone else it's like literally so mental it's crazy you got to be in the right frame of mind because if you're not like that that's what happens to a lot of boxers later in their career you know they uh they get overly cocky or something it's all just up here but seeing younger mike holy shit man unstoppable because he just wanted it so bad you could just see it you know he's like punching right through people so you know things like that pump me up and get me ready for the day and even though boxing may be seen as like a violent kind of activity, it it's more than that for me. It's like a deeper kind of thing. So it, uh, I don't know, it pumps me up in a positive direction, as weird as that may sound. <laughs> but, but I do these little things like this. And uh, But my wife as well, you know, like it, it helps to have your partner in a good mood. So we've told each other, like, stay off social media first thing in the morning. That's not what we do. What we do is, so her, she loves gardening shows. So she watches some gardening shows. They're very tranquil. They're very this and that. We have a coffee together. I do my comedy. She does the gardening shows. Starts us off on a good foot, you know. So that's a, yeah. It's not a tip today. That's a pre-tip. It's it. It'll we'll put it in the bouquet, but it's it's a pre-tip. But how about yourself, Marty? What do you do to avoid, you know, <clears throat> Facebook drama and negativity? So I'm a music guy. Mm. I like music. All right. I uh, I've is, always this was interesting when my beautiful. kids would come back and they would be back home with me for a little bit. They would. That's what they always Weird. talked about was the amount of music. I always was playing music. Like nice. to me, music is, uh, is, is the answer. You know, it was my answer to get out yeah. of the negativity of depression, you know, always have yeah. some, some beat going, you know, I'm an EDM techno, like that's, Weird. that's always my favorite, you know? Uh, so in the morning though, you got to play a little bit more chill, right? Yeah. You know, you, you can't, can't just, just... <laughs> But you know, you, you, start, <laughs> yeah. you start getting in your day, man. Tiesto, yeah. you know, I love that uh, nice. business. Let's get down, let's get down to business, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Boom, boom. you know, that really gets yeah. me going in the morning, though. Like I said, really nice on a drive, too. Yes, yep, yeah. it's great for a drive, but you know, it's more like tantric. Uh, 
Uh, I'll do that at night too. I'll do like chakra frequencies, nice. you know, more, more of that, uh, you know, I'll listen to, especially, you know, being from Oklahoma, I'll listen to, we've got uh, uh, flute music, you know, Native nice. American flute music. Wow. Um, you know, I like to listen to stuff like that. Just kind of that different, uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's a little out there, you know, it's kind of a little, little earthy, little hippie, but it's yeah, also, yeah. uh, yeah, I, like I, I really found that it's too, something about music though. It's therapeutic, you know? Yeah, yeah. I found that if I, that's the word, right. I found if I could give therapy to my mind with just stuff that it just naturally wanted to, you know, yeah. listen to. And, uh, especially at night it would really help me relax and kind of lay, get ready to, to have a good deep sleep. You definitely, mm. I, I think that's a, a big problem. A lot of people have, they don't get enough sleep or deep sleep. Yeah. Right. So it usually are watching final. things. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people will watch. Oh, it's even my TV. Like, it doesn't matter. Your TV is not good to watch before you go to bed. Yeah. Like, you really need to nine o'clock or so, right? We used to make fun of start adults and the old down. people, right? Yeah. Did, did you used to do that? We did like, oh, they always start to go to bed at like nine yeah. o'clock. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm so ready. Not like in bed by nine, but like I'm, start to wind I'm starting down, you know? my process to, yeah. because I need that hour to two hours of, you know, I got to listen to some stuff. I got to flow through some things and kind of decompress and, and really clear everything out for the next day. Uh, yeah, we have I, a I really have found that. As well. Yeah. It helps, and and I know? think the, the way to keep the, the negativity and keep you, you always got to push in the positive. Right. And I think one yeah. way to keep that I've really found over the years to keep positive, you know, as that almost sort of like, uh, uh, you know, take the old story of the, the rabbit and the hare, right? Like, you got you're not rabbit in the hair was a tortoise in the hair, right? Tortoise in the hair, yeah. And you, you could put this carrot out in front of the tortoise and you know it would just gradually, slowly keep trying to chase something. Yeah. Sounds stupid, but if you can really keep thinking about things you are really trying to attain, these big things or something that you're really trying to go after, it allows you to take one more step trying to grab it, right? Like yeah. and constantly keeping that in my mind it helps me subconsciously push away because I don't want to think about something negative. I want to think about this thing that I'm doing. I want to think about this really? next thing that I've got. I'm, you know, this next prize, whatever prize you want to put out in front of yourself. You if you have some prize. prize that you can attain, yeah. you're going to keep taking one more step. And the more steps you can take to get closer to it, you begin to push away all the stuff that keeps you from getting to it. So, That's true. Yeah. Cause you're hyper-focused on it. Yeah. And that, that's the thing, I think a lot of the times when people are focused on the prize, I think they kind of give up too early. It's like that guy that, you know, he's he's digging for gold, digging for gold, digging for gold. And then you see the picture and it's, uh, you know, he's giving up and he turns around. But, you know, you can see that the gold's just on the other side. If he took a couple more shovelfuls, you know, he would have reached it and he's just walking away from it. And I think people, they, they give up on that, you know, those steps too early. And then they just get frustrated and turn to the negativity. But just keep going, keep going in that, you know, focus on it and it'll happen. Uh, I was listening to Jason Alexander. Uh, if you remember him from Seinfeld and duck man, I don't know if you ever saw duck man, <laughs> the old cartoon, hilarious though. Definitely not for kids. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I was, I was listening to him and um, he was talking about people going after goals and staying focused and the same kind of thing. And he said that the problem is a lot of people, when they see, like a flower and they see the bulb that's there, you know, they're, they're looking at it and they see the, uh, not bulb, that's the wrong word, whatever it is before it opens up to be a flower, the bloom, the bloom. Yeah. So they see the bloom, whatever. And then, uh, you know, they, they get frustrated if it doesn't happen in time, but it's going to happen at the time that's right for that flower. And if you just, you know, keep watching, keep focused on it, it will eventually bloom. But um, that's, that's where for me, there's, there's days where it's hard because you see some comments and you're like, Ooh, you just want to rail into somebody that's, you know, attacking somebody, but you really got to just ask yourself if, if it's worth it, you know, is it worth what it's going to do to you long-term? Cause they're going to forget about whatever you said, within 15 minutes, they'll be frustrated in a minute, maybe reply back, snap back, whatever. Honestly, the next day they're on with their life again. And your comment means nothing. <laughs> You're not changing the world with that comment, you know? So is it worth it? And the answer more times than not is no because what it's going to do to you is going to be worse in the long term you know because then you start being that's your frame of mind now it's just everything's negative everything's this that and it's really hard to grow a business when that's where you're putting all your attention 
you know so that's why those people aren't busy and that's why you keep seeing them pop up with those comments because they just have more and more free time you know <laughs> that's it all they need is the you know little bit of keyboard bravery and then that's it so so yeah that's why i stay focused but uh but yeah so but in some positive news because i saw some exciting canadian news recently uh so we opened up our very first tim hortons drive through for coffee on the water so you can now get tim hortons in your boat which is pretty cool uh but that's not the cool news that i heard from tim hortons the cool news is they started doing a promo for dogs uh, which might seem like a strange thing but a lot of people go through drive through with their dogs and so they've done this thing now where every time you buy a coffee and so on and so forth you can enter to win uh in a contest where your dog can win one of i don't even know how many maybe a thousand or something exclusive dog toys and so they made one that looks like the coffee cup and then they made one that looks like a box of we call them timbits you guys call them donut holes i think um anyways you can win these two little plush toys or whatever not plush toys but they're like chew toys for dogs um and i thought to myself that was really cool because they're only giving away a limited number of them people love their pets and as a result they're they're now listed in all the papers here everyone they're all talking about it it's it's even surpassed the news that our prime minister is getting divorced <laughs> like it's that's how like serious we're taking this tim hortons contest <laughs> okay and so you look at that though and it's like what did they really have to do what kind of involvement was there in that you know they got to put some stuff in place but what great exposure would they have had the same kind of exposure if they gave away something to to humans probably not you know dogs the minute the dogs were brought in it exploded and so it got me thinking and that's why this morning i whipped together a little book that uh it's only like 10 pages you can't even really call it a book but anyway it's gonna be free after this but it's jam-packed yeah pamphlet a pamphlet there we go but jam-packed full of some amazing stuff and it's called pause to polish and it's uh how you can build a dog-centric detailing business that will murder the competition and secure lifelong loyal customers. Uh, so it will be free after this. Um, and so my tip today is going to be to read that book. There's some gems in there, but also I will uh, give some hints from it as well. So basically dog lovers spend a fortune on all kinds of stuff. And so what I'm suggesting, we're in the process of rolling something like this out for ourselves as well, but we're going to build a duplicate business doing the exact same thing we're doing now just for people with dogs and what we're going to do is build a whole new brand around it we're going to build a whole basically mini business within our business just focusing on dogs but it's not what you're thinking you might be thinking pet hair removal that's what everybody jumps to when they think dogs right um they think oh i don't want to spend my days you know cleaning dirty interiors and shit like that we've all you know, you've seen those comments for sure. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the goal is to stay away from that kind of stuff. And instead, you're focusing on the person, the person that has a vehicle, and they want their dog to travel in a nice, you know, in a vehicle that smells not like dog, they want their dog to be breathing healthy air inside the car. Obviously, pet hair is going to come into the equation too. But the trick is more going to be about partnering with other businesses that are nearby you that are also dog focused and dog centric, because there are groups of you know communities out there different communities with sub communities community of uh, hey. dog owners i know i said it like 10 times i gotta take a whole bottle now but there's all these groups and there's one thing that dog owners do a lot in these groups and that is talk and share things and there's all these micro businesses revolved around animals and pet ownership that you can take advantage of because pet ownership is not just about cleaning the dog hair it's about appealing to that side of them that their dogs are their companions, their dogs are their, you know, someone that they're taking care of. Um, so anyway, in the book, I give you a lot of really good tips on how we're going to do this. And I will be following up with this because I'm going to document this entire process of how we start this. And this sub business is going to be turned into a seven figure business just revolved around pet loving car owners. And it's going to be huge. But uh, yeah, so this will be part one and we'll do a, uh, a 32 part series but then, i'm just kidding <laughs> marty's like let's go <laughs> but uh but yeah so it's because there's all the byproducts right like i'm big on referrals things like that so when you go with uh you know the, the obvious one is groomers you know so in orbis x for example we have a contesting engine and so a lot of people use that to give away a detail or something like that 
In this case, you can target dog owners and with your detail, you can actually give away a grooming and you can get groomers that come to your shop and they can do both at the same time. The dog gets a clean, the car gets a clean, everybody leaves home happy. So there's lots of things like that. Anyways, check out the, the book slash pamphlet. <laughs> you'll, you'll get some good so, nuggets there. Could you go, since not everybody loves dogs, right? And we yeah. we do hate dog hair. Mm -hmm. you could you could do cats maybe yeah oh you could definitely do cats absolutely and so people spend more money on dogs oh yeah mm -hmm. true but with the tips in the book pamphlet it depends on how you approach it because these same strategies could actually be applied to almost any kind of niche like that um so you could do the same thing with uh, a bridge club you know a bunch of old ladies playing bridge you could apply these same strategies to anything. It's all about niching down and becoming the detailer for that niche. And then uh, it leads into everything else. I touch on all kinds of stuff, ceramic coating, everything, because it all revolves around that. And it's the same principles. You just rinse and repeat. Um, but it starts with not being so broad. You know, oh, we do detailing. We clean all cars. It's like you're getting more focus. It's, we clean cars for dog lovers. You know, like, why is that important? And then going into it and everything has that, you know, like uh, the, the cutesy kind of thing. Like we have a woof woof contest or something, you know, it's just random shit. That's all focused around whatever niche you're going after. It just appeals to them a lot better, easier to convert them, so on and so forth. So, yeah. So, but cats would be a good one too. Personally, I actually like the dog hair. I love the dog hair. Dog hair guarantees you maintenance. <laughs> Me personally, I love dog hair. It's and also because... I'm not cleaning it, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> but and most people that do clean dog hair and have cleaned it, they got a type of a system. And 100%. I don't mind it either, actually. I yeah. yeah, it takes a little bit longer, but you can usually upcharge and make more money. So 100 percent And listen, my dog hair secret is is ultra dress, like spraying ultra dress yeah. down onto the fibers that's silicone inside of a water-based tire shine it gets around the hairs it gets around the fibers of the carpet no more static clean Boom. it's a lot easier to remove a lot of times you exactly. can just then simply vacuum it all right up so uh yeah. ultra it's, dress it's, is uh is my go. is my go way to of tip see now who's giving out multiple tips hey let's go <laughs> welcome to the club <laughs> but uh no see but that's a good point though is that once you get a process down, and that's the thing is the point of the this whole process is to niche down into something very specific so that you can make that process, build something very streamlined, and then replicate it. And uh, me personally, I, I always am baffled by people that post things like, I'm sick of dirty interiors, or I'm sick of this. It's like a pizza shop being like, I'm sick of hungry students. Like, it's it's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Like, it's fuck, man. If there weren't dirty cars, Jesus, man, like, they're, they're not going to be coming to you for, and I get it. It's backbreaking work a lot of the times. I get that part, but that's why just scale, hire someone to do that side, fill your shop up. Now it's not your problem anymore. Now you're just having a problem of counting the money that comes in. Anyway, that's uh, that's my. Listen, you did, you did mention point. the worst type of customer is like a teenage kid at a restaurant, right? Like, oh. <laughs> but I was very specific with a pizza shop. <laughs> a pizza shop, hungry students. That's mm -hmm. key. And, and, then, and you're right pieces it is the the number one like it's yeah yeah but you said that i immediately started thinking like yep yep like worst worst combination i would definitely yeah, yeah. don't want to be yeah <laughs> yeah but but you know what i'll bring up a good point so i did this before uh in a different business but that's how i know these kinds of things work really well I used to have a video rental business and we did delivery um, so this was before, I think it was called zip or something when you could get like home, it was before Netflix, but when you could get video sent to your house. So I did a video delivery when blockbuster, you had to drive and pick it up and so on and so forth. Um, but I knew movies were going to be very, very low margin. Um, and especially once you add in delivery and stuff like that, I uh, just, I knew it was going to have to be really streamlined how we ran things. So I wanted to find complimentary products that we could sell. And one of them was pizzas uh, from a pizza shop. Starting up your own pizza shop was a huge, huge investment. And at the time I was really young. And so looking at that, it was like the insurance, you need a building, you got to find people to run the place and so on and so forth. It was a, a big ordeal. Or you find a few pizza shops. And now anytime you need to expand into a new area, 
you just partner with one of the pizza shops that's there. It makes expansion really easy and really fast because I was focused on one particular thing. They were focused on one particular thing and I was able to make a portion of their profits on each order without taking on the risk and the overhead and all that extra shit. And if something wasn't working out with that pizza shop, I just dropped them and moved on to the next one. Simple, right? So it was a really good business model and you can do the same thing with your detailing business as well. 100%. Anyway, that's enough of my rant there. Check out the book. Absolutely, it'll be posted after this. Marty, 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 I know you got a tip. And, and I do. It had to do with drums or something. It's yeah. Not, yeah. Have you ever been, do you ever play drums? Uh, no. Well, I tried. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, so I, uh, I, the problem with me is I'm ambidextrous, so I can use both hands, which sounds like it would be a good thing, uh, but it actually is the worst, well, for me anyways, uh, because my brain was just going in too many places. I, just, I don't know. I just couldn't figure it out. Cool. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I think I've shared it on here. I'm not sure, uh, but I used to have a friend growing up who had Tourette syndrome, and okay. his way of handling treads he loved to play the drums and i would go over a lot of times as a young kid and just watch mm. him play the drums and we'd just hang out because he was actually really good at it you know and that was when metallica it was you know nirvana it was a lot of that stuff from you know the the late 80s early 90s oh, type yeah. of of music and and i tried one time i did i i learned to to start just pressing that pedal and get the just that steady little beat right like okay. just a beat so so this tip is going to be for people that are just starting out as well as people that are been doing something a while and they're ready to take on one more thing right yeah. could be right you talked about earlier could be yeah. getting into distribution selling some products to the customers when they come in and ask you know because most people that have a shop will always say that yeah customers ask me what i should get and i just give them a link and they just go buy it. Maybe you're tired of sending out a link and you'd like to recoup some of that money and keep yeah. those people staying in your business. Right? Like, so what's your path to do that? Right? So starting out or how do I add something into my business? Okay. Hmm. You got to think of it like you're playing the drums and the beat, right? Your base beat is your core business. It's your core service. I it's it is what yeah. will keep you going over and over and over and over. I to this day still love and enjoy simply washing a car. Mm. I started yeah. by washing a car. I actually mm. was part of my when I went into, you know, I'd put up these tents and and go to places like Best Buy, but back then it was called Ultimate Electronics, or I went to our mall, I went to our office places, I went all around just setting up tents, and I would wash cars, and sometimes I'd do a washing back, right? Yeah, yeah. Huh, those are the big monies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that was my key yeah. core service that then I added other things onto it. Once you get that, Still, beat, even yeah. this week, guess what I have on Thursday? I've got a car coming so that I can do what I just did this past Friday and wash it. Yeah. It's all yeah. I'm going to do. So even to this day, I will still wash cars. It's an exterior wash service that we're going to use to create videos off of. Nice. I'm oh, yeah. still staying with a beat 23 years later. Yeah. still can always come back to something that I know I can do. So if I'm starting off, I always want to have something that I know that I can always do. That's the steady regular. Yeah. And what is every car that comes in? Most every car. Cause I, you know, I did have some customers for a while when I had my shop fully running and we were doing coatings and all like people would actually, this was the joke around everybody that would come in and watch or do that. Like, yeah. My customers would actually wash their cars a lot of time before they'd bring them over to me. <laughs> like it really was crazy. Like, <laughs> Hey, we're going to, uh, you know, clean it and get everything ready for you to just do your little bit. Like, awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome. You know, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Best customers. <laughs> However, you do need to know mm. how to wash a car, every car that comes mm. in. And that's something I can do for the rest of my life is something simple. And it is just a beat right now. Once you got your base done, 
right? Well, once you got your core in, then you can add in what? A symbol. You can mm. add in a percussion. Mm. You can add in this other, you know, if somebody knows drums, you know, I'll butcher all the names, right? But yeah, yeah. you've got then this other what, you know, like that same thing that the drummer boy does, you know, right? That kind of yeah, drum. Yeah. You know, you've got all the marching <laughs> bands, right? Them, yeah. <laughs> and they start setting them up yeah. all around in this drum set. Yeah. And all the same time, they're still hitting the beat, hitting the beat. And so if you want to grow and you want to get to the next thing and maybe distribution is you, you got to just then start trying to touch something else. Then you're mm -hmm. touching something else all the same time, still hitting your same beat, core services, your core things that you do. I, I, every time I talk to somebody that doesn't understand maintenance, Listen, you've got these people coming back every single week. Get your mobile guy out there. You know, if, if you want to go into doing maintenance and you've got a shop, you need to hire somebody that only does maintenance exactly. style detailing. That's all every customer, then they get his service, not yours, his yep. in your mobile van. And they will only know what core service you want to provide, right? Wash. Fine. You can wash them in your shop, wash them in your shop, and you can wash them out in a maintenance style, you know, express detail. And you've got another van out going. Then you got people coming in. I've got to hit over here this other part of my drum set. And I got people coming in that want products and I, I've got products to get sold. And I, right. I've got ceramic coatings I've been doing. Right. You can see how you start adding things in and always having that core beat. Here's the key. Yeah. Right. Every song comes to an end. Mm. True. And then it starts back up with another beat, right? Mm. So if you can always stay doing your beat, the song really never will end. As long as that beat stays, doesn't matter about percussions, doesn't matter about all that, actually then becomes that motivation. Sometimes we're looking for motivation to move to the next thing. How many times you guys heard a song or heard something where it's just a beat? Mm -hmm. Then it gets faster. Then it gets yeah, faster. Yeah. Then it gets faster. Right. And then we start going. That's, I think, what I love about EDM, right? Like yeah. you hit that, that build boom, up. The, boom, yeah. 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 Boom, and then that boom. Right. Yeah. And it's just <laughs> right. Let's go glow sticks. That's Come on. True. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> it really can be the, the way that that you build that motivation to really just explode then too yeah. is you hit your beat and you just keep going your beat faster and faster and faster and faster until there's that explosion. And I've got this going, I've got that going. I'm, I'm all around and it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a cool part about this. It's okay. When economy happens, it's okay. Cause we hear Sean, you and I talk about it. There's plenty of people talking about it now. There's a lot of troubles going on. Okay. That means my beat's still rolling. If yeah. I need to take a percussion off of my setup, it's okay, right? I need to pull beat. a drum set back. Yeah. It's okay. I'm still hitting my core, right? Then as Absolutely. I progress further and I keep going back up and up and up, okay, cool. Then I'll bring something else in. Maybe in another year or two, maybe it takes five years for the economy to really start going that's when I'll bring more stuff in. But at least going through this part, I can hit my beat, stay moving, stay going, stay motivated. And if I can add in another, cool, I'll add in another. But constant, steady. 100%. Beat. Yeah, that's key, though. That's a really good tip, too. And I think that's something that you can see with successful businesses. Um, there's numerous examples. Like even uh, I'll mention one of our homegrown ones here, Shopify. Uh, they they had their core business, which was the e-commerce side. They started to introduce payments. They were going to take over their own payments and do that. The economy started taking a turn, things like that. Pandemic happened. They pulled that off. So they basically pulled the, you know, the percussion off or whatever you want to call it in this case. But they kept that core beat going. And so that's why now their, their stock is starting to, you know, evolve. It's been going through some rough waters, but <laughs> but the rough core time. business is still there. Yeah, it's exactly, and especially for e-commerce, a lot of people you know signed up, and that's that's the thing when you look at something and you see there was a huge surge of people signing up and it tapered off. It's something else going on, but their core—if you just analyze their core, 
that's strong as ever. And it's because they stuck with it. And same thing, Auto World, we're continuously adding new things to the mix, but our core is always still there. And we don't drop that because that's that's the lifeblood, ultimately, right? It may not be as profitable, like our detailing isn't as profitable as like our paint protection film or our tinting or our ceramic coating, but it's consistent and it we may not realize it, but those customers feed into all the other instruments right so it's that core that's necessary so as much as we may not like pet hair you know what i mean having that core that's there is important to bring us all the other customers because without that core we might be seeing a you know 20 30 percent drop in our tinting jobs or our ceramic coating jobs but by having that core there you know and that's where sometimes organizations that are too big and they look for things that they can cut sometimes they look at the you know something like that and they're like oh our detailing doesn't make us as much as ceramic coating. Let's just drop that entire thing. And then a year later, they're like, holy shit, our ceramic coatings are down 35%. And so, hey, well, yeah, you, you cut out that core bead. And so that's that's a very important lesson, I think, that uh, especially I like how you address that to the new guys as well. And, and you know, someone that's established as well, but focusing on the new guys, because that's a lot of people are focused on what kind of vacuum I should buy or what kind of this and that. But it's it's those kind of lessons that, that Marty just explained that I think are super important, especially when you're starting out getting in the right headspace so that no matter what kind of vacuum you get, as long as you're using a vacuum and cleaning something and that's profitable for you, to some degree, keep that core, keep that beat going and, and you'll be fine. You'll make it through any storm. Absolutely. Awesome, man. Well, Marty, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate you. I'll uh, drop this video and I'll put the link to the, the book, uh, the pamphlet. <laughs> underneath enjoy and i'll keep you guys updated with how things go with our new uh doggy detailing and uh yeah I'll, I'll great idea good. man it really is yeah. i'm looking forward to reading that book myself thanks right on man thanks yeah. i even put a little picture of a dog on the front all by myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife this morning was like what the hell are you doing so i told her it's like don't bother me today i got a lot of work to do and she comes in the room and she sees me working on this with a dog on the front so she's like really a lot of work to do huh it's like, hey, don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, send it to her. She's read it too. So it's good. But uh, cool. Appreciate you, man. I'll see you next week. Everybody stay safe. And if you're laying there in bed tonight, reach out and talk about some distributorship. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you. Cheers.